गुड मॉर्निंग भैया गुड मॉर्निंग गुड गुड मॉर्निंग 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 थैंक 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 यू 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 वेरी मच देव जी डॉक्टर with the good energy positive energy with pranayam with other exercises so we're going to start with deep breathing moving gently your body slow and deep breathe deep breath make sure that you breathe through your nose only so we start our class with the breathing at the same time moving your body so first just deep breathing and then we will do that is called fire breathing exercise in sanskrit that is called bhastrika which ignites the fire bhastrika means the one ignites the fire so when we do bhastrika it generates the heat in your body so if you're feeling cold sometime and if you do bhastrika you will be warm So let's do the bhastrika the fire breathing exercise we will do 100 times using both nostrils then we will do through one right nostril for 100 times and then through left nostril you can do that in sitting position but we used to do that in moving position so let's go if these are short breath so not long breath short and quick breath so as you bounce up inhale as you bounce down exhale is short breath and short breath when you do it quickly that is for your upper respiratory means your nose your throat your main main uh, pathways of breathing your respiratory or not the deep the bas uh, the kapal bhati the one we do at the end is for the entire respiratory system so let's do your left nostril first and breathe in and out through your right shake your legs that relieves the pain from your calf let's close your right nostril in and out through now to your left
and shake your legs. Since now the body is warm, we will go for the next one, which is uh, slightly more. You're gonna inhale, step out, exhale as you step in. So this is, I'm going to give you the exercise for every single one of you. So this one is for everyone, no impact at all, but keep on moving from your shoulders and from your hips, your, your legs. Step in, step out as you bring your arms up, up and down. So it's a coordination also between your legs, arms and breathing. The rest of you, let's go for 60 times. Someone got unmuted, can you please mute? Now we'll do the second round of uh, 40. And make sure your knees are straight so you will have a less impact on your, on your joints. But we want uh, not too much, but some impact on your joints, cartilages, so they get strong. If you spare them from everything, then they start getting weak. So let's do the second round of uh, 40. Person with 19083 screen name, you need to go on mute, please. There There's a lot of noise. Please go on mute. Now we'll go for the third round, which we'll do of 30. So we always slowly go up, then slightly down, higher than the previous one then slightly down, and then even higher. So that's how we keep on challenging our body. If you don't challenge, you do not progress, physically or mentally. Let's go for the third round, which will be the 30. breath, shake your legs, and we'll go for the second one. So this one is for everyone. Swing the whole body as you lift your legs, as you lift your arms, slightly sideways, you twist your body. So this one is for everyone because yoga is the coordination between your body and your mind. And when it comes to your body, your body should know that you're moving arms and legs at the same time in certain direction. So let's go for the skipping.
More than, more than warming up. So now we're gonna go sideways. We call it uh, abducted muscles. So lift, bring your leg to your left, your left leg, and your arms, your whole upper body swings to your right, swings to your left as you lift your leg sideways. This is for everyone who can't do this. And simply jog. You can take the joy of jogging inside the house without impacting your joints. So let's jog at one place and keep on breathing deep in and out. Always again, breathe in through your nose. So now we'll jog really fast. So step really fast at one place 100 times. exercises or some of you are warming up exercises and for some of you are really getting work out of your body you are working out so let's go to one edge of your mat and we are going to run back and forth 10 plus steps forward and 10 steps or more than 10 steps backwards. But you need to go fast. Five times. as high as you can, swing your arms, break those, we call scar tissues if you have, by swinging your arms back and forth. You get rid of so many shoulder pains. If you move your shoulders freely, so you have no resistance going upwards, coming down and going backwards. Okay, now we're gonna swing your whole upper body to your right. As you breathe in, breathe out and breathe in. You concentrate only on your exhalation. Inhalation will happen automatically. Stay in the middle. And just let's go to your right, to your left, without moving your body to your side. But just Reach away from your body with your whole body. Going 
upwards to your right, upwards to your left. So you should feel the stretch in your side, your abdominal muscles, your lower back, which is very important to stretch them. And stay in the middle. Keep on swinging your arms only without moving your rest of the body. Keep your shoulders relaxed. And now we're gonna swing in one direction around five times. Let's go for one, two, three, four, and five. Do the same thing going in the opposite direction. One, two, three, four, and five. We'll do one more time. Keep on breathing deep. One, two, three, four, and five. Let's go other direction. One, two, three, four, and five. And let's go back and forth. Keep on swinging your arms from your shoulders, your neck, your shoulders, lower back, your knees. These are important joints. You need to keep on, keep on making them mobile. All right, let's go around with your both arms. One follows the another one. Forward, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll change the direction. Let's go backwards first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So try to bring your arm close to your ears. So that's how you will know that you are doing correctly. Let's do it again. Forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And reverse the direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. When they do the bowling in cricket, that's what they try to do. Bring their arm close to their ear so they can extend their arm long. So the longer the arm, more the force they have in the ball when they throw to a batsman. Let's do both arms together, same way. Forward, around, one, two, three, four, and five. Let's go backwards first. One, two, three, four, and five. We'll do one more time. One, two, three, four, five. Opposite direction. One, two, three, four, and five. And these are the exercises everyone can do. That is the beauty. Majority of the exercises I give two different versions, one version for everyone and other one for the advanced. But there's some exercises, a few, not many, a few that only the advanced can do, all right? Let's go to sideways. Bring your one hand to opposite uh, shoulder and other arm behind your back. Let's twist without moving your feet without moving from your ankles to your right, along with your head. Look backwards, whole body. One, breathe out. When you go to your side, two, three, four. Bring your arm upwards, the back arm. Seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now both arms parallel, just swing to your right, swing to your left, breathe out. So it's, a, it's for your lower back without moving your ankles. You can feel your lower back is being twisted. It's very important to keep moving your whole group of muscles of your body to be healthy. Okay, that was the upper body. Let's work out on lower body. So you can take um, 
support from chair, wall, any object. Move your one leg, balance on your one foot, swing your arms back and forth, and kick your leg forward. Forward, backwards, forward, backwards, forward, backwards. Same thing with left one. Let's kick forward. Once you are balanced, then let it go high and backwards high. Oops. We'll do one more time. Right leg, back and forth. Left leg. All right. Now we're gonna swing your leg forward and then quickly to your opposite direction. And then upper body goes to your left side. So left leg up towards your right, upper body to your left. Kick up and then to your side. Right one. Breathe out, let's do five times. Up and to your side. Up, two, three, four, five. All right, so this was our warming up. But as I said, some of them you got good workout anyway. Feet apart, let's stretch. These are also going to be for everyone. Stretch upwards. That will lean towards your right. And it's not only holding, but at the same time, you keep on stretching upwards. Your head towards your lower shoulder. That way, you work on your shoulder and neck at the same time. So your shoulders, upper back and neck, they all go together. Let's go to your left side. That means shoulder problem equals to upper back problem and your neck problem and vice versa. One more time. And upper back, lower, I mean your neck, shoulder problem, all these have problems means the lower back problem. Lower back problem means the knee problem. And if persistent, your knee problem, then your ankle problem. So that means all the joints go together Don't think that sectionally working on your body will work. No, your whole body. Let's go with your both arms up and breathe out. Lean towards your right side. Same way the hamstrings. Stiff hamstrings means your stiff back. Stiff hamstrings means stiff calf. Stiff calf means stiff achilles. Stiff achilles means something is called plantar fasciitis. So they all go together. If you stretch your calf muscles, you will get rid of your foot pain, your feet pain. So stretch your calf muscles, stretch your hamstrings. Bring them down. And let's bring your feet more apart this time. Arms apart. Then we're going to bend from your hips, not from your back. Go as low as possible. We always do these exercises for everyone. This depends upon your body. 
it's never you can say that I cannot do enough. As long as you feel stretch, you are doing enough. Let your right foot with your left hand look upwards. Let your left foot with your right hand look upwards. Breathe out also. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more. One. If I'm going lower, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Let's place your hands in the middle. If your hands don't reach down, so what you want to do, like this, I have a... Uh, I have, this is called block. And these are very inexpensive. You can get from anywhere, online, Walmart, or some everywhere. Just get the one. If you are not able to reach your hands down, it's good to keep. Okay, let's shift your body weight back and forth onto your hands, onto your feet. Move your whole body back and forth. So this way, you will know how low your hands can go. You will have an idea. You can bend more than you can what you think. Let's stretch your left foot, left arm, right arm behind. Let's switch long arm from your lower back. Long arm, left one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Let's do the same thing with your both hands. And again, these exercises are for everyone. Both arms forward, both arms backwards. Let's go for one, two, breathe out. Don't forget to breathe out as you go forward and backwards. Nine and 10. Let's place your hands again in the middle. Let's put your left hand in the middle of your feet and right arm up your twist. This is a great exercise for your lower back. And of course, shoulders and neck if you look up. And let's go to your left. When you are comfortable, you can do deep stretching some days. Let's do one more time. And deep stretching means you hold your position for 20 seconds, half of minute, one minute. Keep on stretching. Let's go to your left. But not every day. And if you are already flexible, you may not need it. But if you're stiff, you can keep on going without injury because when you do the deep stretching and if you are not conditioned, you may hurt yourself. All right, stretch your, more, your feet more apart. So you can place forearms down. So see if you can keep your back flat, knees straight and still your forearms down and then your head on the floor and then arms behind. And let's come up. So next exercise is uh, a great practice to do push-ups and everyone should try this. The hands forward, bring your body forward. So your shoulders are parallel to your wrist. Bend your elbows, go up and then backwards. Forward, down, up. Breathe out as you go down. Three, four, 
If it is difficult, you can go on the countertop, you can go on sofa. Seven, eight, or you can put your blocks. Ten more. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Very good. Let's place your knees down. And this is a great exercise for your hip joints. And where your femur meets your, your hips. All right, knees apart. Keep on stretching them out. And then move your body back and forth. Forward, backwards. Forward. And when you move forward, make sure your shoulders are down and your chest is up. In every single pose, we need to know where your joints are. We need to know where your muscles are, their positions. Let's place your forearms down. Once you lower your upper body, stretch your feet more apart. But be careful without injuring yourself. You know your body better than I do. Let's place your chest down. One hand on top of other, back of your hand, chin on, on back of your hands. So this can be a great exercise for your neck, your upper back, your uh, hips. Let's come back, your hip joints, and again, your lower back. They go together because the same muscle joints one end to your hip and other end to your lower back. All right, now we're gonna bring your feet together, one behind, one forward, and let's go backwards to sit down. So slight gentle twist of your knees is important to keep them mobile. So if you are able to put one foot or one leg on top of other is good, if you can, otherwise you keep them separate. You know, if your knees are stiff or if you have never done it, do not try. Let's place your one foot on top of other thigh. And then try to bring your other foot also. And this is called lotus position, which could be great and could be harmful. So depending upon your body. So now we're gonna, otherwise just cross your legs. You're gonna lift your hips off the floor and then walk your hands forward and then drop your hips down. So this is a great pose for runners. Hindu always do this. Uh, Maninder, don't forget to do it, this every day. Neeru, yes, let's do it runners. Mahesh, anyone else, whoever run? So this exercise is a great stretch, deep stretch. So that way you will not make your body stiff. Runners have a stiff body usually. And stiff body means more prone to injury. Let's place your feet together. And yeah. even overstretching also is more prone to injury as well. But yeah, Maninder here. Uh uh, can you tell something about the heel pain? Because I sent you a text in the morning. Yes, let's do that. The upper side of the this area, like this particular area. Okay, yes. 
Well, that's what we are going to do. I, as I said, if you have a pain in your heel or in your foot, so hold your foot from the middle, stretch. There's so many exercises we do all the time to stretch them. So once you have this, so again, working on your feet only is not going to work. Working only on your heel is not going to work. You have to stretch your whole calf, your hamstrings. That's how it's going to work. So once you hold it, pull your foot towards you. Reach with your other hand also. So lift it up as high as possible. And hold it. Keep on pulling, relax it. Knee straight, relax your foot, relax your ankle consciously. Subconsciously, you are going, not going to relax it. So consciously release it and then pull it more. And same thing with your right one. Just hold it. In one hand, stretch your knee and make sure you're pulling your foot towards you. Hold it with the other hand also. So you should do the deep stretch, means hold it for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, and keep on stretching. So this is one of the exercises. And same exercise you want to do is stretch your left foot forward. That was off the floor. This one is same one on the floor. And this is not only for your, your heel, your echelle, or your foot, but also great for your knees. Hold down with your both hands and pull it. Hold it. Keep on pulling. Relax and pull, relax and pull, relax and pull. So that will relieve the pain out of your heel, your foot, your calf. Let's do the other one also. Reach out your foot. And you want to make sure not holding only your Big toe, but your whole foot. And if you are not able to reach to your foot, I know not everyone is able to reach, you should get a belt or chunni, chunni, wrap it around and pull with your chunni. Look on the side to show you. Pull it, keep on pulling. So this is one of the exercise you would like to do for your feet and you will get immediate relief. For some of the exercises, you get immediate relief. It right? works really, it works. I already start feeling good. It uh, feels better? Yes. Good, we'll do more exercises. I will point it out. Let's place your hands forward, knees apart, hips down. Chest up, knees off the floor. Up to this point, everyone is ready. Let's make your feet more apart. Let's bring your hips backwards. Wipe your hands in the middle. Now once you're here, let's bring your toes in, your heels in, toes in, heels in, toes in, heels in. Bend your knees and roll up your body. Okay, let's go for the next group of exercises. Feet apart, arms apart. So make sure your, sh your shoulders not up, they're relaxed. As we did a lot of exercises of your shoulders, you should be able to Recognize when your shoulders are relaxed and when they are tight. 
So whenever we have tension in our brain, in our mind, you tighten up your, our shoulders, so relax them. Bring your feet to your left. Look forward towards your left hand, the front hand. So far, everyone should be able to do it. Let's bring your left arm up and look up. So this is not keeping your body, your chest forward. I mean, uh, not keeping your chest sideways. Bring it forward and then look up. So let's watch every single joint of your body. Your front foot is all the way forward. Back foot, you can adjust to balance your body. Both knees are straight. Your shoulder, front shoulder is upwards, back one is downwards. Elbow straight, finger straight, neck up, look up. Now bring your body forward, all the way forward. Let's place your left hand over your foot. Right hand inside your foot. So if you are not able to place your hands with keeping your knees straight, you need a block. So you should use block. This is a deep stretching of your hamstrings. Let's bring your back heel up, your front knee bent, back knee straight. Make sure that is straight. Lower your hips and your chest up. Bring your hips up, your chin down. Chin up, hips down. Good, let's go. Your head goes in opposite direction. One more time, seven times. And let's keep them up. Your hips. Let's bring your front foot all the way back. And straighten up your leg. Bend your upper knee and then twist. It's a great exercise for your hips. And lower back, lower knee straight. Make sure you don't bend the lower knee. Keep on twisting. Okay. Now straighten up your leg, place it down, go forward into upwards dog. And then knees down. Let's go into child pose. So, Mananda, you should do this downwards and upwards dog every day, and you will feel relieved. Let's do it. So, let's go into downwards dog. Let's bring one heel down, bend the other one. Let's repeat it. If you are Having pain in your feet, in your heel, that obviously means you are not stretching enough. Let's, and once a week stretching is not enough. You must do six days a week. And now both heels down, both heels up. Both heels down, both heels up. One more time, up. Let's go forward into plank, upwards dog, child pose. Okay, today's challenge is as we always have one or more than one challenge each class. So today's challenge is push ups and the middle hand push ups. So advanced, I mean, if you've been practicing with me for a long time, that, like Dr. Sanjay, you're gonna do 70, Marinder, 70 in one shot, Mahesh. Atul, if you can, who else? Neeru, if you are there, I hope. 
You left your, your laziness. Okay, and the intermediate 40. And uh, the beginners, 25 in one shot, non-stop. It doesn't matter if you keep your knees down or knees off the floor. So this is for everyone. I'm going to give everyone you can do push-ups. So knees down, hips you can do either backwards or slightly forward. If you want to make it easy, keep your, your knees forward, bend your elbows and come up. Bend your elbows and come up. Or bring your knees backwards, hips forward, bring your elbows into bend position and come up. Or you can go on um, tabletop, countertop, or sofa. You just place your hands high and then move your chest up and down. But must do 25, 40, and 70. All right, let's go. And Manindar, make sure your knees are, I mean, your knees are straight and your heels are backwards. Your toes are forward. So you keep on pushing your heels backwards. So that will continuously stretch your Achilles, your heels, your, your feet. Ready, let's go. Two, three, four. Good. Mm, I would like to know who else did it. Mahesh. I did it 25. 25. Very nice. Excellent. 65. 65. Who is this? Atul. Atul. Wow. Nice. I didn't hear Dr. Sanjay. But yes, yeah, 70, Muninder. Wow, excellent. 62. 62, congratulations. With, with a pause, meaning I didn't put my knees down, but I, it's just like keeping a, a, a position of downward dog. Yeah, yeah, blank in between the, the, the breaks, but I was able to do 62. Very good, excellent. Yeah. I did 40 there, Ji. How many? 40. 40, wow. <laughs> Excellent. So when you aim high, you reach high. When you aim low, you're going to reach low. So always, no matter what it is, your physical challenge, your mental, your professional, doesn't matter. Keep your aim high. And everything starts from the body. 32 for me. 30, how many? 32. 32, very nice. Very nice, Rindajis. And the beginners for 32, wow. So that's how you can do it. Never give up. And this is something you have the least chances to get hurt. I don't know what you're going to hurt doing push-ups if you do it proper way. All right, let's go into upwards dark. And then let's go to downwards dark. And Mandar, place your both heels down and hold it. Let them stretch. Hold it. You're, you have to feel that your body weight is on your feet, on your heels. Let's bring your left leg up. Bring your foot between your hands. And your back heel inside. 
And this time you're going to bring your right arm up. So we're going to, we are going to go to triangle. There are so many variations of triangle. Now upper arm along with your body, left arm forward, and let's come back to center. Let's go to your right. Do have, we'll go to other side now, back and behind. Right arm up. Make sure both knees are straight. Back shoulder is not upwards, downwards. Front shoulder is upwards. You're looking at your hand. Front arm forward, back arm backwards. Let's place your hand outside of your foot. Left hand inside your foot. Back heel up, front knee bent. Make sure you're, you have a good distance between your foot, between your left and right foot. Lower your hips, look up, and then bring your hips up, chin down. Let's go for seven times. Two, three, four, and five. Three, I mean two more. Six, and seven. Let's bring your front foot all the way up in air. Make sure your knee is straight in this position before you bend. Now bend and twist. And then stretch, lower it. Let's go into upward stack. And then child pose. I would like you to do uh, the type of uh, uh, we do um, push up is uh, your hands, your fingers are together, your thumbs are together. It's called diamond push up. So I would like you to practice that one also. So we'll do uh, the beginners. If you even can do 15, 20 is good. Intermediate 30 is good, and rest of you can do 40. Either knees down or knees up, or combination of both. All right, so let's do 40 of these. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 19, 20. Should complete. Going to child pose. Give a break to your arms, to shoulders. All right, so let's go into Cobra. And from Cobra, we're going to go into Downwards Dog. Both heels down, Melinda, and you hold it here. So let's bring the right arm up, I'm a right leg. Place your foot between your hands. Your back heel down, left arm up. Left arm along with your body, right arm forward. Let's come back to center. Don't get discouraged if you don't know all the movements we do, because I want you to be consistent. And one day you will know exactly what I am about to do. 
Before even I do, you will know what I am going to do. Okay, let's hold your left foot in your right hand. In the beginning, you may have to watch once, twice, and keep on doing, watch and keep on doing. You will get it. That's how we all started. Let's do the right one. When you do push-ups, your uh, squats, you already are working on your heart also. So we'll have a different positions of your feet this time to do some squats. Yeah. And squats, not only for your thighs, but for your abs also in terms of the muscles. But specifically for your knees, it's very important that you do properly your squats so your knees get stronger. Pull down to your ear lobes, opposite ear lobes. That helps your cognitive thinking, your, this, the, we call it, uh, you know, the prefrontal cortex, where your memory is, where your decision power is, where your clarity is. So if you do these type of squats, you will improve your memory. They have done the study that uh, the kids who did these squats, they improve their grades. So let's go down and come up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, seven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Now we're going to work not only on your knees and thighs, Let's involve your lower back. So now bring your toes together and your heels apart. When we have a stiff lower back, or we call it sacroiliac joint, we get so many different problems. So let's open them up. So your heels out, toes in. Let's hold down to your earlobes. Let's do 30 of these. Make sure your knees are not together. These are separate. So you must have uh, some gap, depending how much upon your structure, but make sure those are apart. Let's go for one, two, three, four. Heels all the way out. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 23, 24, 30. Other thing is that, keep your hips backwards. If you bring your knees forward, beyond your toes, you're gonna ruin your knees. I just warn you again and again, keep your knees backwards. Now, let's work on your thigh joints. So we're gonna work on your thighs, knees, and thigh joint also, where your thigh bone meets your hips. So here, you're gonna bring your feet apart. That's the first thing. Let's go into sumo position. If you know the sumo wrestlers, that's how they stand. Now here, if I bring my feet apart, I mean feet, see my knees are passing my ankles. So I need to keep my ankle with, uh, aligned with my knees. So let's bring your feet apart. 
And now my knees are not passing over my ankles. Here, bring your toes outwards and heels inwards. So like your toes are all the way out. Might take some time, but you will get it. So that's how we are going to do squats. Let's hold on to earlobes, go up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, five more. 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Whenever you do squats, your knees should be going towards your middle toes, not inwards or not all the way out, just right in the middle of your feet. So that way you are going to build your muscles in correct way, the way your body is supposed to be. Now let's do a few more good cardiovascular and strengthening. So go on your mat, arms up, squat, your feet in the middle, then hands down, either both feet together are going to go out or you one foot at a time. So you come into plank, and then bring the right foot forward, left foot forward. You're going to bounce up. So let's do 10 of these. So it just depending upon how you want to do one foot at a time or both feet together. Let's bring arms up, bounce up, hands down, one foot, other foot forward. But these are quick movements. Let's do 10 of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, And 10. Take your deep breath. Bring your feet apart. And just in the align with your shoulders. Hold down to your earlobes. We'll do five continuous squats and then we're gonna bounce up at sixth one. Let's go for that. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We'll do lunges. Stand on edge of your mat, the back of your mat. Press left foot forward. Bend your knees. Right arm forward. You have a left leg forward. Opposite arm forward. Step back. Step your right one forward. Left arm forward. Bend your knees, step back. Let's go for one, two, three, four, five, and ten. Step now forward in front of your 
mat. We're going to step backwards this time. So left foot back, left arm forward. So you, you see your whenever the foot is forward, that's the arm goes backwards, the other arm forward. Step forward, right foot back, bend your knees. Let's go for one, two, three, four, five. And 10. Excellent. Let's do a few planks. And abs. Let's give it a try. We'll go from high plank to low plank. But if you have a difficulty going up and down, you can just stay in one position. So there are very few things you need to be aware of. Your toes are forward, your heels are backwards, knees are straight, shoulders are forward, your middle of chest is upwards. Let's hold it for one, two, three, four, and five. Let's go into low plank. One, two, three, four, and five. Let's go up. One, two, three, four, and five. Let's go down. One, two, three, four, and five. Up. One, two, three, four, and five. One more time. One, two, three, four, and five. Stretch your lower back. Child pose. And let's go on your back. Knees to your chest. One in the here, another, here's another one. Hold down to your foot in both hands and then stretch your knee up. You can lower your head. So knee straight, make sure you pull your foot downwards. If it's difficult in your both hands, use one hand. This is a great stretch of your whole hamstrings. Let's see, can you do the right one? Knees to your chest. We'll do three downs, both, and then alternate legs. Touch with your hands. Legs straight, upper body up. So knees straight, shoulders off the floor, arms behind your shoulders, legs slightly down. Let's hold it for one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now, right a hand, left arm up, and right arm, left arm behind, right hand towards your left leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and let's hold it again. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Hold it again one more time. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Feet together, your knees apart. Take deep breath. Always inhale through your nose. Relax your knees. Okay, let's place your left ankle onto your right thigh. Take one step at a time. It's a great stretch. Now hold down to your left knee in your left hand, right foot in your right hand, I mean left foot in your right hand. Bring them together to your chest together. So now we get confused into next step. Right hand, reach out to your right shin. Now left hand, between your legs, if you remember, and ask your hand to follow what you're thinking. Left hand between your legs to reach again to your shin. And pull them towards your chest. Gently roll side to side, to your left. Your right. If you pull them towards you, you don't have to take support from your arm to move to your right to your left. By pulling your legs towards your chest, it will move your body. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. Both feet down, right ankle onto your left thigh, right knee, your right hand, right foot in your left hand. Pull them towards your chest. Now reach your shin in your left hand, left shin in your left hand. Right hand between your legs, very important. If you follow right and left, then you'll be able to get it. And pull them towards your chest, and then roll side to side towards the left. Keep on pulling towards you, so you'll be able to roll side to side. No matter how hard you work out, doing all these stretchings will help you to relax again. Now hold on to your both feet in your both hands. And you want to hold middle of your toes, your knees apart, and your feet apart. So you are stretching your inner thighs, the base of your inner thighs. So knees are bent. And then you can roll just slightly to your right side, to your left side. You should be able to feel the right lower back, your left lower back when you roll side to side. It's like a you are not making it roll. Your body is rolling by itself. Your whole body to your right, to your left. So relaxing now, stretch your knees also and feet apart. This is another one, Maninder, to stretch your feet towards you. Let them be stretched and then bounce them up and down. So you can stretch the base of your thighs, inner thighs, back of your thighs. And let them go down. Now cross your legs, 
We'll do something is called Sahaj Agni Sar. So cross your legs, drop your knees. Place your back of hands together in front of your body. And then bring your all the fingers together at the side down angle of your belly button. And gently press that point downwards and then move it in the clockwise cycle five times. Three, four, five. Now let's go to your right side of your belly button, like a, about an inch outside over to your right. And then four times, I mean five times. You can do it every day and you, it will make big difference in your, in your intestines your gut. Let's move slightly upwards. Keep on moving upwards until you reach under the rib case. Then you cross over to your left side. It's a gentle movement, but make sure you go deep. It's not on surface, not only muscular level. It's deeper than muscular level. Your abdominal cavity is a big cavity. You can go deep and gently. You might find some spots very sensitive. So you want to work on those points more. So that way you will make your intestines healthy. Stretch your legs forward, up, arms along with your body, palms up, feet apart, the lower back stretched, your neck extended, your shoulders down. So this is the position for to relax. So feet apart, arms down, Palms up, shoulders down, neck extended, lower back extended. So long spine. Take your deep breath. Now let's scan your body. Allow your right foot to be relaxed. If you allow them, they will be relaxed. Now same thing, your knee, right knee. Just you have to allow so it can be relaxed. And same thing, your right thigh joints. Now your left foot, allow it to be relaxed and feel it is relaxed, your left knee, your left thigh joint. Allow your abdomen to be relaxed, your chest, and then reach to your right shoulder and feel it is relaxed. The right elbow, the right wrist, the right hand, the left shoulder, the left elbow. left hand. Now bring your attention to your chin, your lips, allow them to be relaxed. Your jaws can be relaxed. We always, the majority of the time, hold them back. All the facial muscles, 
your nose, your eyes, your ears. Allow them to be relaxed. Your eyebrows, your center of eyebrows, forehead, your head. Allow your neck to be relaxed, your back of shoulders, your upper, middle, and lower back. Hips. On the whole body, feel loose and relaxed. Take again a few deep breath in and out. Now let's bring gently knees into bench position and roll to your side. And you bring your lower arm under your head. And now take your time to sit up. Now we will do uh, three breathing exercises here, three pranayam. The first one, you're going to inhale. If you take one step at a time, then you will be able to get. So the first one is called um, Agni Sar with Bahya Kumbak. Means Agni Sar with outer holding. So you're going to inhale. Exhale really fast through your mouth. And don't inhale. Keep your breath out. And when you can't hold, then slowly inhale into the chest. And then let it come out. So let's try first this one three times before we do the next one, next step. So inhale, exhale fast, and hold it. So in this one, your exhalation is really fast. Your inhalation is very slow. And in between, once you exhale, you hold outside. So when you exhale fast, that measures your strength of your lungs, how fast you can exhale and how much you can exhale. So let's try again. Inhale, exhale fast. So this is for first part of, we call it Agnisar. Agnisar is to enhance your metabolism, to rejuvenate your villis, your flora, your intestines, your stomach, your liver, 
your uh, pancreas. So that is all those organs get affected with this, the next one, what you're going to do. So what you will do is exhale, same way, hold your breath out and move your abdomen in and out, in and out, in and out, hard and fast. So you may not be able to get it uh, day one, but if you keep on practicing, you should be able to feel that your abdomen is going in and out, in and out. So let's try again, inhale, exhale, So this is called outer holding. In Sanskrit, it is called Bhaiya Kumbhak. When you move your abdomen back and forth with outer holding, that is called Agnisar. So what we will do now, we will do instead of holding outside, we're going to hold inside and then move your abdomen same way back and forth. But this time, your abdomen is not going to be moved smoothly. It's going to be moved a uh, little bit uh, with a stiffness since you're holding your breath in. So let's inhale. Chin down and move your abdomen in and out. Sometimes when you feel bloated, not right after food, you should not do. But at any other time, when you feel bloated, your, your stomach is you know, kind of uh, stiff, or you feel the air is trapped, this is the best exercise you can do. Try again, inhale, hold your breath in, Make sure your chin is down to your chest and then move your abdomen in and out. Now let's do one last exercise, uh, Anulom Vilom, alternate breathing. So place your first two fingers of your right hand on center of eyebrows, close your right nostril using your right thumb, and then slowly inhale to your left, and use your last fingers to close your left nostril, open up your right one, and slowly exhale to your right. Now inhale to your right again. Close your right one and exhale to your left. Let's repeat it for seven times, but make sure you inhale slowly and exhale even slower.
Let's chant Om in three different tones, three different times. Let's inhale. No. Thank you and namaste. Rub your palms together and just wipe off your eyes. Thank you. Enjoy your day and see you next Thank week. You. All right. I hope you feel better, Manindra. Doing much better now. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, dear sir. Thank you. So, Thank you so much. Okay, G. Bye. Bye, Dr. Sapp. Thank you, Bayar. Okay. Bye, bye. Bye. Bye, Jatin. Bye. Bye, G. Okay.